What is an LFSR? What a great question. Have you been asking all your life? I always wanted to know what an LFSR is. <laughs> it's a uh, linear feedback shift register. Well, what does that mean? Linear feedback shift register. We talked about shift registers in a different video. Um, and we are going to use a different shift register today. Uh, we are going to use a, if I can find it here, just to find it, uh, this one. We are going to be using a CD4014B. It is an 8-bit eight, eight shift register. All right. So, um, but what is this LFSR stuff? Okay. Well, let's see here. I've got a couple of diagrams that might explain it. Um, let's start with this one and let's hide this part here right now. All right. Okay. So here's the shift register. Okay. We're going to have some bit pattern in the shift register. And every time we tell it to shift, it's going to move right one, one place. Um, so this one is going to go down here, here, here. So all of these values will get shift it over and then one will pop out. There won't be room for that one, right? So they would just, and one will come out and it'll be a serial chain. A lot of times you can use these for parallel to serial conversion, parallel in, serial out. All right. And what this one though is going to be really strange. Okay. Um, we are going to modify Okay, remember this one shifts to here, this one shifts to here, this one shifts to here, but what shifts in to, to replace this one? Remember, it gets moved over. What replaces this one? Well, it's going to come from a feedback path. That's that linear feedback. We're gonna take this value, this value, and this value. We're gonna exclusive or them together, and that's like a sum, and then we're gonna put them here. So whatever these guys are, so we have one zero zero. So exclusive or is they, uh, you're going to get a one unless they're all the same. Okay. So, um, let's look at a different way to draw this. Cause this one's, this one's a bit confusing. All right. Here is a, uh, let's see here. I want to cover things up. Here's another way to draw it. So let me zoom down all the way. Yeah. Um, here's another way to draw it. All right. And so we are going to have some, this one has a 16 bit register and we're going to be shifting it out this direction. Shift, 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 shift. Okay. And so that's last one will, will fall off and then everybody will shift to the right, a right shift. But what comes into the beginning? Well, this one, we're going to use three values. We're going to be using a value from the 16 location, the 13 and 14 location, and the 11 occasion. We're going to exclusive order all those together, and then we're going to shove it in the front. All right. So that's an interesting thing. So what is it that we're doing here? Well, um, there is mathematics. It actually is an equation. We're going to have um, X to the 16th plus y to the 14th, plus x to the 13th, plus y to the 11th, plus one. Uh, that's the value this thing is operating at. Now, it's a whole bunch of math involved in these things, and I'm not going to go in that today. Um, but just to say that there is an equation and there is mathematics behind all of this. Um, not only is it implemented in hardware, but it's implemented in software. It does a whole bunch of things. All right. So one of the things it does is it creates random numbers and let's see here. Let's take a look at this here. All right. Got to zoom out a bit for this one. All right. I think that's all on the page. Okay. So we're going to be using uh, these CD 4014s, 8 bit shit registers. And so we're going to be, this is going to be where things are coming in. We're going to be shifting eight times and then it comes out here and goes into this one, shifts eight times, comes out, goes into this one, shifts. All right. So we have 24 bits. Uh, we have a, a 24 stage linear feedback shift register. Um, 
and we're going to be pulling off a couple places here, 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 and here. We're going to exclusive or those all together, and that's what's going to come in here, right? And why do we pick these particular locations? Well, there's a whole bunch of math behind those two, and we're going to be using the taps uh, 7, 16, 22, and 24. So remember that equation, x to the 7th plus x to the 16th plus x to the 22 plus x to the 24. We're going to be using that. It's actually what's called a Fibonacci configuration. And in that Fibonacci configuration, every time you load in something, this, this value, this 24-bit value changes, right? And it changes such that a different number will always appear, okay, until you exhaust all combinations. And you actually, it says this will give you a pseudo-random value, which repeats only after 10, 10, 2, I'm sorry, after 2 to the 24th minus 1 clock pulses. So you have to shift this thing 2 to the 24th minus 1 before it repeats. That's just really, really amazing. So uh, this is being used as a noise source. We'll talk about that. But it's also a pseudo-random uh, generator. So... Um, in uh, some computer languages, you can have a random, like in Arduino land, there's a random function. Is it a true random function or is it a pseudo-random function? Well, it might be one of these where it's pretty random, but but only random for uh, to the 24th, okay? Let's, uh, since everybody doesn't understand powers of, I mean, uh, base 2, let's put in 224. Or, uh, where is the, here we go. So that's 16.8 uh, 16, 16 million. So it's, it's, it, it repeats itself every 16.8 million. That's pretty good. Um, pretty good randomness. And of course you can make more and more and more of these. And there are a whole bunch of values that you put into these Fibonacci, uh, Fibonacci sequences. And um, in fact, there are tables these tables tell you which which taps to use, um, you know, 20, 23, 24, 22, 17. Is that what we were using? No, we were using a different one. We were using seven. Anyway, there is taps that you use in order to get these shift registers to do the Fibonacci sequence. And so you can look it up. You can do the math. You can do a whole bunch of stuff. So, but I think for today, oh, um, yeah, I think for today, let's just hook one up and watch it go. All right, I've built one here. Uh, these are the three shift registers. Uh, this is the exclusive OR gate. I'm using a CD4030, 4030. It's a quad, a quad exclusive OR gate. And so we have a quad exclusive OR gate and then three 8-bit shift registers. And it's all in uh, 4000 series logic. So we can operate this, you know, 12 volts, doesn't really matter. Uh, anything you'd like to do. And then I have a little 555 here that will supply the clock. All right. All right. I put a scope probe on the output. So let's take a look at what it does and uh, creates a bit pattern here. So let me, let me go into the menu of the trigger. Let me add some hold off. Let me add uh, 200 milliseconds of hold off. And there you go. You can see um, that it just gives different bit patterns. And uh, let's close that down. Yeah, and it just keeps the going and the going and the going. And whatever bit patterns you see there, it's not going to repeat that pattern until, uh, what did I say, 8 million? No, 18 million? What did, oh man, I don't remember the stupid number I calculated. It's, uh, there we go, 16.8 million. 16.8 <laughs> million. You have to wait for 16.8 million of uh, these uh, clocks. So each, each, each cycle there's a clock. Um, and uh, yeah. So it's a nice way to send random data down or pseudo random data down as a system. I did a um, video once on a serial data analyzer to see if you got any 
drop bits, any errors in the in the transmission. And it used uh, it used something like this for generating random bit patterns that were not so random, um, but it exercised everything, and you would know what to expect. You would generate this, and then you would look at the at the other end and see if you got the same bit pattern on the other side. So, yeah, pretty cool. Um, one thing that I was worried, uh, not worried, but wondering about is, does it average to the middle? Okay. Um, what some people do is, let me see if I can quickly do that. I need to add a little bit to the circuit here. Hang on a bit. All right, I have added a low pass filter uh, to the output. I have a, uh, what looks like a 1K, 1K resistor and a, what was, what value capacitor is that? Oh, I think it's a, what is that? 334, so it's 300 nanofarads, 330 nanofarads. Um, Anyway, I'm adding a low-pass filter. And what that is is an averaging filter, okay? It does averaging. And so um, this is the input to that filter, okay? Input to the filter is the actual uh, bit stream. And when I take the average of all of those bits, uh, it will average out to some, some analog signal, right? You get a whole bunch of ones, it'll go up. You get a, a zero, it'll go down. And it'll fluctuate randomly because I have a pseudo-random noise, pseudo-random uh, number generator. This is, this is used in a lot of analog synthesizers to do white noise. It's a, it's a perfect white noise source if you have an infinite number of bits. And so there are, I actually tried to find one once that people actually used to build silicon chips that just did this. They were pseudo-random uh, shift registers with analog output and they were used in analog synthesizers. Sometimes people would build their own. Um, certain synthesizers had not so random noise sources and they had a particular sound to their noise and people liked that sound. So depending on what synthesizer you were using, you might, uh, you might be uh, like that noise a little bit better than the sound of, of this noise. Anyway, it is white noise and um, that is why this particular person here uh, made this. It was for a white noise source uh, to be played. And uh, you need to play with the uh, speed of the clock. I don't think this would... Well, I guess we could hook it up. Let's see if we can hook it up and sound. And listen to it. All right, I'm going to uh, take the uh, input of my stereo and run it here. There you go. Yeah, it sounds like white noise to me. So there you go. Uh, circuit for the day is a, a linear feedback shift register. There's actually a non-linear feedback shift register as well. I forget what it's called. Um, but instead of uh, using uh, addition, it uses a uh, power function as well. So it makes it a little, di little bit different.